Lindsey Crosby, Auburn baseball, securing a top 16 seed, meaning they will host a regional this weekend. It's big. Uh, it's something where, and we've talked about this on this show, I mean, for over a month now. You needed 18 SEC wins to lock down hosting a regional. You finished with 17. Um, disappointing fashion, obviously. You go into the Kentucky weekend with 16, and it's like, okay, you just got to win two games and you're good. You won one, it's like, okay, SEC tournament, win some games and you're good. You didn't, you won and done. Right. But uh, one game was enough for them to make it. Uh, the SEC got four spots, which I think really helped Auburn. Uh, Florida had a great tournament as far as, as far as they knocked off Alabama, they knocked off Texas A&M, who I think is probably a national seed at this point. Uh, and so I think that fourth SEC spot really helped Auburn. I'd imagine we're probably the 15 or 16 seed, probably the la- one of the last teams to get that regional spot. But sure. we got it. Right. So it's great. Um, and we're going to have some some uh, great baseball this weekend at Plainsman Park. First time we've hosted a regional um, in over a decade. 2010. 2010. 2010 was the last year, which is crazy because Auburn baseball has had some pretty good seasons since then. Including mm-hmm. a world uh, a trip to Omaha in 2019, so um, they've just done it via the road. And I think the year before that they went to a super, if I recall correctly. So, yep. I mean, w- we've had some pretty good squads, but the fact that you know they're top 16 going into the tournament that's that's huge. That's huge. What do you make of the pitching situation going into this? What do you expect the rotation to be? Okay, so I know that they've done some work over the last couple of days while they've been back from the tournament to mm-hmm. get all get everybody some work in. Uh, Gonzalez didn't get a bunch of work. Um, Mason Barnett didn't get a bunch of work. But the plan now is Joseph Gonzalez is going to be either game one or game two starter. He's going to move up. Obviously, the format of um, of the regional double elimination. You at best you're guaranteed two games. So mm-hmm. take your best pitcher, throw him in one of those. Uh, I also know and winning, that and winning your first game is extremely important. Winning your second one, if you win the first two games, because one and four play each other, two mm-hmm. and three play each other. Auburn will be a one, so right. they will play the four. Yep. The two losing teams play each other, and then that loser of that game is out. The two winners play each other, and then if you win that game, you essentially get a bye because the loser of the winner games have to play the winner of the two losers. And then the winner of that plays you. And you still have two losses um, to give before you're knocked out. And you only have to win one. They would have to win two. And they also have pitched an extra nine innings plus. So that's, you know, you want to win that first one for sure. Mm -hmm. But if you can win that first two, you pretty much are going to win the regional. And this whole thing happens over a weekend. I mean, this is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, if you are in that loser's bracket and you are trying to win the regional, you play up to four games in three days. So Joseph Gonzalez going early, uh, important for Auburn. He's shown a lot of depth. So he's he leads the rotation in average innings per game. We talked yeah. about this in the Auburn Daily piece, breaking this down. Uh, so that's great. And then in the rotation now, or an option in the rotation is reliever Carson Skipper. It's something where with Tommy Sheehan, he was brought in to be the lefty starter. It hasn't worked out. He's in the bullpen now, and he's pretty solidified in that role. He's good in that role of long man out of the pen who can give you four innings, uh, minimize the damage, keep you in the game. So Carson Skipper, who has not started in the regular season since 2019, he started on Tuesday in the SEC tournament. Uh, He is in the process of working a little bit deeper to be ready to start in a regional. If you face a, a lineup with a lot of lefty bats, you want to bring in a lefty pitcher to face them, Carson Skipper is going to be that guy. Uh, so I feel good about you have identified now four starting pitchers for the max four games you may have to play in a regional. Uh, and I feel good about all four. I feel good about where these guys are, Trace Bright, Mason Barnett, but obviously having Joseph Gonzalez go first is huge because like you said, winning that first game is key to having a, uh, the best possible path through the regional. Yeah. What does this say about the program, Lindsay? Regardless of what else happens this postseason, because we're kind of limited at the time of us recording this and when the show goes up, we can't speculate on you know who Auburn is drawn, you know, dr- is has drawn. And you know, I'll try to get you on later in the week so we can preview this. But just as far as you know, Auburn was projected to be either second to last or last in the conference based on you know who you listen to going into the season. And they are hosting a regional. 
I mean, that's that's pretty incredible in the Southeastern Conference. I mean, a, an absolute gauntlet. Um, an Auburn show they belong on the national stage, and so they're awarded some more home games. Yeah, it's it's so if you go back and you look at Butch Thompson's history at Auburn, this isn't that surprising. But I think what threw everybody off is obviously 2020 shut down, and then 2021 you had pitching issues. Mm -hmm. And so you made it to the SEC tournament. You were one and done there. You didn't make the postseason. So I think that that a lot of the national media has a big, big recency bias because there's there's no way you can watch all of college baseball games. I'm a call, I'm a voter in the postseason awards, and I had to go look up stats for some of these guys before I cast ballots. Yeah, and I still don't want to share my entire ballot because I missed some stuff. Uh oh. Um, yeah. So a lot of people did though, like you yeah, said. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, it's tough. There's a lot. I mean, there's 64 teams in this tournament. And of that, 31 of them were conference winners. So there's 31 conferences playing D1 baseball. Uh, I think it's something where a lot of people looked at the 2021 record and not Butch Thompson's track record. And they didn't understand the context behind that 2021 record with all of the pitching injuries and the lack of availability and having to put guys in roles they weren't ready for. So. Right. Uh, this is something, and, and Butch addressed this earlier in the year with us when he was talking to me uh, in one of the media availabilities about so much of the preseason rankings and the early season and even midseason rankings is all based off of what you did last year. Mm -hmm. They You start off, you don't start off with a clean slate. You start off with, this is what last year's team did, and then here's who you added and here's who you lost. And so I think... Next year, you're going to look at an Auburn team going into the post uh, going into the, the beginning of the season. It's probably going to be ranked based off of what it does this year, and going to have a little more respect. I don't think you'll get an end of like a last in the conference projection again um, because of that recency bias. But that team was always better than that that finishing last in the conference, and they knew that. And that was a little bit of fuel, a little bit of bulletin board material for these guys. So right. I'm excited to see what they do this weekend. I think there's a good chance they're going to get some of the uh, – a bunch of Southern teams. I think maybe like a, a Southeastern Louisiana, Kennesaw State, maybe some teams like that in their draw. I don't think they're going to have another Power 5 opponent. If they are seated where I think they are, uh, I think they're probably going to avoid some of those Power 5 opponents and they're going to have some lower conference opponents. So it's set up well uh, for them to win the regional and hopefully advance to the Supers. Yeah, that'd be huge. That would be huge. And then obviously we'll be able to see who Auburn will take on hypothetically in the supers. If they're that 16 seed, like some people are saying, um, yeah, Tennessee, Tennessee baby. um, but Hey, there's always a chance that Tennessee loses there. If then Auburn gets the host super. Either. There's always a chance. There's always a chance. It's not counting. It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Weirder things have happened.